let me get started with um, just a very short demo of how I structure my highlights and notes. So, and I realize now I should I should have created the diagram. Unfortunately, I didn't have time for that. But there are diff different stages when I um, when I read an article. So I I normally first and I will first write it down here so you get a sense of my process. So what I always do is save the article. Could be a book, so could also be writing uh, reading on on Kindle. Um, I read the the the, um, the piece could be a chapter, could be an article, and I highlight highlight interesting um, passages, so um, or parts. And the the way I read it, I don't want to get too too deeply into okay, how do you highlight? How do you take notes? That that's a whole other topic, but. Um, what, what I generally do is I first skim an article or an, uh, uh, a chapter so I get a sense of the structure. I read it and then per section I, I make highlights. So if I just go weaponize, if I, if I weaponize my highlighter and I go highlighting everything from the beginning, I, I end up highlighting way too much. Um, and I will show you also an article in a bit that maybe I went a little bit overboard. Um, but yeah, sometimes the article just contains so much good stuff. Then often also while I'm, I'm reading, I also annotate. So I use the annotation function, in, for example, uh, Memex, what I use now, or Instapaper or Kindle, any, any of the options. And then I either use Readwise or I manually transfer the highlights and notes um, transfer oh, to Readwise or directly to, to Rome. Um, oh. Or directly to Rome. So that is all the setup. So I don't do the heavy lifting in one go. I first read an article or a chapter, go through it with my highlighter, take notes as I see fit, then I export it but that can spend days doing that. Um, once it, it's in, in Rome, then I start to structure it. So I will I'll take a article. So for example, this article I read, I read recently about mental models. Um, so I have a template. So the template is this. And I can pull it up with a um, I can pull it up with a short um, well a short code which I've set up using uh, text expander. So in this case, it would be this, and I get this template, which you here you see filled in. Um, is there? Anyone, maybe can, they can put it in a chat. Is any anyone completely not familiar with um, attributes? So if I say attributes in Rome, do you think, okay, I have no idea what it is. Please put it in a chat or just speak up. Let's see. I see nothing in the chat yet. So I assume everyone knows what an attribute is. Um, I do. I'm, I'm, you, I'm sorry. I, I can't type fast enough. So I was going to interrupt you. Um, oh. <laughs> but uh, I, 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 don't, I know how to use uh, attributes, but um, mm -hmm. I can never figure out why I would use them. And I wondered if you had a sense. I mean, I've seen the videos where they make tables, which seem like a trivial yeah. case. I, I'm, I'm curious if you have a sense of what they will be used for in the future. Yeah. So now they act as links at this moment, and you can indeed create attribute tables. So the attribute Wait, tables you know, is not. Wait, I hear someone is unmuted. Now, because I really don't want to get back to that. I drove all over the world. Um, is it? Am I the only one hearing that? <laughs> There's I, I see someone in the background. Well, I'm just going to mute everyone. All right. So. Um, Attributes at the moment, 
it's uh, it's a link and you can create attribute tables in the future. Uh, hopefully more will be possible. There's already a little bit more possible. So I'm going to show you something that's um, that's dangerous. So as you can see here, author, I have 241 linked references to author. So I can now do uh, at table and I will put in the author attribute. So I just, so this is the function as, it, as it's called in, in Rome language. And then it takes an input and that is uh, an attribute. It takes an attribute as, a, as an input. So I, I simply write it as a link because, well, attribute essentially is a link. So now if I click outside of it, it's going to load. And all right, now you see um, the, so now you see attribute table. I realized that I haven't installed the sorting plugin. So there's also a sorting plugin created by David uh, Vargas, Vargas, and he has a website called roamjs.com. I've just put it in the chat. Um, and you can download a plugin if you're not, if you don't know how to uh, install a plugin, may, for instance, maybe you can link to the article um, on Romstack how to uh, how to install a plugin. I think it's a it's a public article on the blog. So for now, you can essentially just see only the stuff that's that's on the uh, um, like like all the attributes that are used on the same level. Those are visible in in the attribute table. So I've just, again, I've just, oh, I cannot change it now, I see. Um, so I've just called the author attribute, as you can see here. And now if I click outside, it needs to load again. Um, and you can see just in a nice table view, okay, the author, the associated tags. Uh, I have something called PS level, which stands for progressive summarization level. Uh, the source, um, and you can see some some other stuff that I use. So you can see it's not very precise yet. It it takes all the all the metadata, all, at least all the attributes that are on the same level. Um, so the hope is that in the future it will become more useful. So that's just uh, just a sidestep. Um, when it comes to metadata, it, th there are different opinions. So some people like to nest it under something like they do metadata and then they nest everything underneath. Um, my experience is it makes it difficult to then use it the way I just use it now. So um, that way, um, like so, some data is hidden. It's it's not. It, it cannot look outside of of this of this little part. So um, that's why I keep it like this, just in in the root, as they as they call it. So you have you have blocks, and the the block that is the least indented. That's that's the root. If that makes sense. I don't want to become too technical. And then. So you, you saw how I created the, the, the template using text expander. Um, and then I work from highlights to notes. So in this case, I essentially took the article because, because there were so many lists and, and things in it that I thought, okay, this is interesting. This, this is something I want to remember. So instead of using Instapaper or Memex to read it, I just had it side by side. So. On the on the right hand side, I had the article open. On the left hand side, I had the uh, I had Rome open. And the cool thing about Mac is you can essentially on a web page just highlight something and drag it into into Rome. So you don't don't even need to do copy paste if you don't want to. So I create I create these links. So these were subheadings from the article. Uh, th this is a list. So as you can see. I link them up. So in the future, when I when I search for Jean Piaget, I will get this article up. So that that's that's one of the useful features of the bi bi-directional linking. And 
obviously you you can link up your your notes as well but i think well why why wouldn't i um also include um links in in the highlights because it contains useful information and in the in the future if i look for thinking tools for example i get the same thing so very handy what i do next is um I, so i take notes in this one in this particular case i didn't take too many notes but here you can see i take a note and i indent it under under a highlight and i prepend it with again a attribute note and why why i use notes instead of a link well i just like how it looks and it's easy to type just a double uh, semicolon um, and I even have also for this, I have a, a shortcut, uh, a short code set up. So it's that's it. So you can you can you can set up uh, short short uh, short codes or shortcuts using Text Expander. Um, if I have a question, so when I'm I'm reading something and I have a question, um, I use this this uh, short code. Um, so semicolon, Q, semicolon, uh, and then I get the question attribute. So why is this useful? Well, like I said before, a note is a link. So I can click on notes. That's how it originally came up here. And uh, I see I see ev everything, what, what I've noted down. Then you may think, oh yeah, okay, nice. Now, now you have like uh, tagged a note and uh, yeah, you can see it in your list of 100 notes. Well, I can also pull it in using a query. So that's why I have the notes section. Instead of manually transferring my notes, I just run a query. So if you're not familiar with queries, uh, I will start writing one now. So it's a slash and I start, oh, someone tries to get in. So it's slash query and I use the and query. And uh, Francis, maybe you can, if you want, you can also link to the queries article, please. Um, because the query logic, it, it relies on Boolean, Boolean logic. So if you're not familiar with Boolean logic, it, it might be useful to, uh, to dive into it. I've written an article about it. So in this case, I want two conditions to be true. So I want to find all notes on this page. So I use the and query, and as you can see, it's already pre-filled. Um, but I would, what I simply do is I take the article name, put it in here, and then I say, and I want, on this page, I want all notes. And I just put in notes, and ta-da, here it is. Um, so in this case, you see, oh, also the, the other query pops up because I've edited it twice. So I will delete it now. And you can see it pulls in all the notes, but the cool thing is I also have the context. So it's nested underneath a highlight. So I can simply click on the highlight and have the context. I Well, for me, this is just beautiful. When, when I thought, when, when I discovered this, before I was manually moving my notes and then linking back to the highlight that I noted on. Now that's not even necessary anymore. I can just pull them in using a query. Very simple, just takes two, two inputs, the name of the page, you want to search for all the notes and then just the notes, the notes uh, link. Um, and then from here, you can do anything with it. I like to, uh, so for, for like for some, books I have, for example, I go a little bit further. Um, let's see, what's that here? Yeah, so here sometimes I go I go really deep. I, I like I include Zettels, so I, I write my own evergreen notes. Um, but it all starts, it all starts just with highlights, then notes, and as I'm reviewing my notes, I'm triggered to think about something else and I create the Zettels. So um, let's see. Yeah, so here I've, I've written something and I tag it with, again, I tag it and I call it the seedling. So a seedling means, okay, it's still growing. Um, and then I just pull in um, notes and 
and uh, block references. So it makes it real easy because if I enter this page and I, I want to use something from this page, I could just open up something in the in the uh, in the sidebar, and I can just start typing here, or I can just say, "Oh, this is an interesting note." Uh, let's see, this is interesting. So I'm going to let's see, does it work from here? Sometimes, yeah. Oh, sometimes it's not working as I want. Yeah. So now, for example, I've just referenced this block. So it makes it real easy, especially with queries. But if you if you have a set structure for how you organize knowledge, because Rome doesn't require any structure, but it pays so much to have structure because you just know where to find stuff. I, I don't need to search for my notes. I know where to find my notes. Um, and the, the advantage I have with prepending this with the note attribute is, okay, I will never use a highlight word, word for word, but a note, I can use it word for word because those are my thoughts. So it, it also, especially in the case of uh, uh, writing for academia, I can kind of imagine with uh, plagiarism that you don't want to quote people word for word or too much. So um, like incorporating these little tricks, um, it, it, it helps to distinguish between what's your own content and what's, what's not. And as you can see here, even if I didn't have a note and I would just see this, just this bit in, um, in a query, it's still nested under highlights. So I've tagged it by indenting it under highlights. So everything here, it's indented under highlights. The highlight tag is somehow associated um, with this with this block. So I know it's a highlight. It's not, I know it's not my own words. So that's also a way to clarify.